Today I have a very exciting watch in front of me to show you guys. As you guys have been aware, there's been a lot of hot releases. Tudor's just been killing it with the recent releases with the Tudor Black Bay Pro, the Pelagos 39. This watch is kind of a reissue. It was based off of the uh, kind of the 2014 Tudor Heritage Ranger 79910 that had an ETA movement with a 41 millimeter case diameter, uh, no integrated bracelet on that one and that was discontinued in mid 2020 but that one was based off of the very original Tudor Ranger the references 7965 and 7995 those ran from about the 1960s to 1988 and that watch was 34 millimeters so much smaller than the current lineup that watch in and of itself was actually based off of Tudor Oyster prints from the 1950s that was used on the British North Greenland expedition where a group of 30 men uh, went to go investigate and record the terrain under uh, very extreme temperatures and the Tudor Oyster Prince didn't skip a beat. It served them very well on that expedition and as a result Tudor decided to release a watch, a Ranger watch that was meant to capture that spirit, capture the adventure of that expedition similar to what the rolex explorer did for the mount everest uh, summit this watch measures 39 millimeters in diameter it is a uh, 11 millimeter thick watch it'll wear very light on the wrist and it'll also slide under a variety of shirt sleeves as well the lug width on this watch is 20 millimeters there's a nice taper that tapers down to 16 millimeters at the clasp there's a lug to lug measurement of 47.7 millimeters or the wingspan so it has a very nice presence on the wrist this watch has a domed sapphire crystal the case shape is very similar to that of the black bay 58 more of a boxy shape uh, case profile this watch features a screw down crown and is water resistant to 100 meters so very rugged and very tough for everyday usage this watch features tudor's new system called the t-fit adjustment which allows you to adjust the bracelet size on the fly about eight millimeters. So it's a very convenient feature. The caliber inside this watch is Tudor's in-house manufacturer caliber MT5402, 70 hours of power reserve, and it's the same caliber that you'll find in the Black Bay 58. Now let's take a look at some of the dial details. You'll see that this watch has the iconic 12, three, six, and nine, a classic Ranger arrangement and then there is sort of an aged loom that Tudor has used here. It glows very bright in the dark. All of the indices are uh, printed uh, rather than applied. It gives it a nice vintage touch. I know this watch has received some flack for not having applied indices, but I think it gives it a really nice look. The hand stack, the seconds hand, and the hour and minutes hand are also uh, polished, which is the only polishing that you'll see on the dial. Dial color itself is sort of a very matte black. You'll see a pop of red on the tip of the seconds hand and that's pretty much the only color that you're going to find on the dial. At the six o'clock position you'll see just one line of text just denoting the model name Ranger. Tudor kept it very simple here which I think is a really great design choice. Now how does this watch uh, stack up to the Rolex Explorer? Uh, for those of you who have followed my channel you'll know that I used to own the Mark II, uh, reference 214270 in 39 millimeters, and I would say that this watch stacks up very favorably to that watch as far as the wearability, as far as the sizing, and you know offers some of that heritage and history as well. It might not be exactly on par with the Explorer as far as the, the heritage and history, but I think it definitely does offer a great wearing experience from kind of the same Rolex family and lineage as well. Now, in comparison to the 36 millimeter Explorer, and I'm, I'm referring to the reference 124270 that Rolex reissued back in the 36 millimeter sizing. I have that one in my collection as well, and I've done a couple of videos on that watch, and I've really enjoyed the wearing experience. And this isn't to harp on the Explorer. It's definitely an icon and a classic and sort of the, the OG, if you will. Uh, but I think the, the latest reference, the 124270, is a little diminutive in size and I think this Ranger actually does a little bit of a better job as far as the wearability and wrist presence is concerned. The 36 millimeter Explorer is a little bit diminutive and a lot of that is due to the 19 millimeter lug width. I think the 20 millimeter lug width 
works a lot better at 39 millimeter sizing. It just gives a little bit more of a wrist span, wrist presence. The Explorer is gonna be a lot more dressy than the Ranger because of the polish finishing on the bezel and on the case. Overall, it's just gonna be a little bit more versatile, a little bit more dressy, but I do think that this offers some amazing value. I think some of the advantages and my biggest likes about this watch is really just the sizing and the dimensions and the design. I think Tudor really knocked it out of the park as far as the wearability and comfort, especially with that T-fit adjustment. The design itself, I think, is very well executed. Like I said, lots of great simplicity on the dial. Very classic look with that 12, 3, 6, and 9. Another huge perk of this watch is the value. This watch on bracelet retails for about $3,000, and it features an in-house caliber that is the same caliber that's inside the Black Bay 58. This is kind of considered, quote unquote, the entry level tutor in their sports lineup, but I think it really packs a very mean punch, especially when you compare it next to the ETA Black Bay 36, which retails for about $2,500. I think it's definitely worth the $500 price premium to step up to the Tudor Ranger. Another thing that I really love that I think I touched on earlier is I think this is actually, it could kind of be a viable uh, substitute for the Rolex Explorer, especially with the 39 millimeter Explorer being discontinued and the 36 millimeter being a little too diminutive in size. I would say that this watch really kind of scratches that itch if you're looking for a Rolex Explorer. I don't see it as a cheap uh, replacement, but I really do see it as a, a strong contender if you're just looking for a field watch from the Rolex Tudor family. So it's not a watered down watch by any means. It's very solid and very well built. What would I say are some negatives about this watch? I think the number one thing for me is I mentioned the age loom. I do understand Tudor's design choice to keep it consistent with the previous generation Tudor Heritage Ranger and maintain that green, sort of greenish aged loom. I do feel that it's a little bit more on the green side than I personally would prefer. It's one of the first things that kind of stood out to me when I first saw this watch. It's kind of almost like a highlighter green. As much as I don't like aged loom, I, I do feel that a more creamy color would look a little bit better on this model or you know, just going with a more stark white. Another design choice that I think a lot of fans would appreciate is including the rose logo on the dial. I personally like the shield a lot. I think it gives the watch a bit of a modern touch to it. That is just another area that I think the fans would appreciate as well. Last but not least is the availability. It's kind of crazy to me that there are wait lists now for Tudor watches. There's just a lot of hype around these models, which is understandable, but it really kind of makes, brings the watch into kind of Rolex territory with the wait lists and that kind of overhype that could potentially kind of turn some people away from the brand. This could be a temporary thing, but it is something that could be a little frustrating to the average consumer, uh, the average watch fan. Overall, this is just a really solid piece in terms of value, in terms of design and history. I'm really glad that Tudor brought this one back in the lineup. So anyways, guys, hopefully you found this review interesting, informative, helpful. As the channel slowly approaches 4,000 subscribers, I just wanted to thank you guys for your continued support and your viewership, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Hope you have a great day. Take care.